Deborah St. John, we are glad you've joined us today. So, Dr. Matt and Deborah, tell us how your week's been and what you've been seeing this week. Well, it's been really busy as usual. We're always very busy at St. John's and it seemed a little extra busy this week. We've had all kinds of things go and new it's formulas like, coming out yeah, and just lot lots of people coming in. It's like the world's on fire and we know where most of the fire extinguishers are. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. and it's like, it's like there's, there's so many people coming to us lately and there are so many people messaging us like on Facebook and everything they're they're wanting to know you know they're, it's really cool because they're using the success that we had during COVID with our people and and that really did I, in, in a lot of ways COVID did a really good job of like validating natural medicine right and invalidating you know traditional medicine because you know the doctors didn't know what to do people didn't know what to do and so the places that did specialize in natural medicine that actually stayed open and didn't cower and you know because we were considered essential businesses um, they were there you know fighting the fight we I remember being goodness we were working second and third shifts we were mm -hmm. you know having to uh, we were you know 5 a.m. 3 a.m. 2 a.m. we were you know just juggling a lot and it was really busy uh, but through all of that there was a lot of validation and a lot of people saw how the natural medicine works so it's really awesome because so many people now are just coming I mean you know whether or not they have a if they have a uh, athlete's foot or whether they have you know a, a brain tumor they're, right. they're still looking toward natural medicine they're not throwing away the oncologist or the uh, podiatrist but at the same time they're they're looking into natural medicine more as a complimentary or even as a first choice yeah so it's pretty cool it's really really neat well, good. Well, let's go ahead for all of our viewers out there. We are live. So if you have any questions, feel free to call in on the number you'll see on your screen momentarily, or you can send them in live on Facebook and we're going to have them answered here on air for you, hopefully. So um, definitely chime in anytime. We're going to go ahead and get started from questions from uh, recent or other weeks. I recently heard that hormone replacement therapy is tied to an increased risk for ovarian cancer. Is this true? Oh, we've been seeing that. Matter of fact, it's clinically true. Uh, they're, they're definitely, especially your, your estrogens. Uh, there are a lot of physicians who have begun uh, being very careful about prescribing estrogen in particular for women. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of uh, estrogen blockers being prescribed now and, and hormone blockers. Uh, that's concerning too. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely, uh, when you start talking about any drug or any hormone, and that, that goes, you know, it's not just for estrogen and for testosterone. You know, testosterone in men can cause side effects and, and cause a lack of production of natural product of testosterone. And with women, the same happens with estrogens, except estrogen can be a lot more uh, damaging in the body because it can lead to uh, problems with malabsorption of, uh, of calcium. It can lead to bone density issues. It can lead to so many problems. And in men, estrogen can be extremely destructive. Uh, so, so when you talk about, um, you know, the hormones, I caution people, even with melatonin, we talked about that before, you have people who are, you know, you, you hear a physician sometimes, they, want, they don't even know sometimes that melatonin is a hormone produced by the pineal gland, and you need to make sure that, that you need it before you take it. Taking a hormone when you don't need it or taking more than you need will cause a down regulation in the organs or glands that produce that hormone. So if we don't need it, we don't need to take it. So many women uh, are on, have been on estrogen for birth control. That's the reason that they're on it to begin with, and that's the reason they started on it. And then, you know, by the time they have their, you know, their hysterectomy or whatnot, they're thinking that they wish they hadn't, but it's too late at that point. So it, you, you need to be very cautious when it comes to hormones, especially in teenage girls. And then in my brain, <coughs> I'm thinking also you've got the increased hormones in a lot of the meats and stuff we're eating now that you used to not have back in the day. So that probably doesn't help. Absolutely. You know? And like when we eat meat, we try to get organic meat, which is interesting because that's a strange label to put on meat. You think about no pesticides they didn't spray your cow with pesticides but there's a lot more than that it's about what's going into them it's about the bovine hgh the uh, uh, growth growth hormone it's not actually hgh it's bovine i guess it's b 
BGH. So uh, BGH. So the but these growth hormones that they put in them will cause a lot of problems. And they put estrogens to make the you know the pigs fatter. Uh, you know, and the people who eat bacon they don't care. They want a lot of fat in their bacon. So that you know they want the pigs nice and fat. But think about what you're doing. You know, and that's getting in your system? Absolutely. Okay. Environmental estrogens in the chicken. You know, we, we, you joke all the time. I'll, we'll walk somewhere and we'll, you know, you'll see, um, you know, some boy who's, you know, 14 years old and he's six foot eight. And, you know, you'll say, well, it must be the chicken, you know, <laughs> something. Uh, but it's, it's very interesting when you, when you look into people's health problems. And then you start tracking and you start looking and, and it's like, what have you been doing the past few years? And you start finding out. And sure enough, it'll, it'll be tons of environmental hormones, tons of chemicals, and tons of, you know, these issues that stem from those being their main problems. So it's common. Wow. Well, Again, we are live. Feel free to call in or uh, message in on Facebook with any questions that you have. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. What is the difference between whole food supplements and the synthetic kinds of supplements? Everything. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's so easy, and this is confusing. This is really confusing for people when it comes to supplements. Oh, yeah. uh, first off, you'll never find a good supplement at Dollar General. You'll never find a good supplement at most pharmacies. You'll never find a good supplement at Walmart. Uh, but occasionally, Walmart will get a closeout deal from a good supplement company that'll turn around, and as a result of needing the sales, they'll sell to Walmart. You know, they'll dump them some inventory. And so people will go to Walmart and say, oh, well, my goodness, there's right. Nature's Way. That must be, it must be a good brand. You know, but Walmart carries it. Why would they be carrying it? It was because they got, you know, the product was dumped on them. Now, though, we have Nature's Way. Uh, we have uh, so many companies like Nature's Plus, even these companies that used to be really good companies that have sold out. And we've talked about this before on this program, but uh, there are 14 companies that own the vast majority of every supplement company on this earth, except for a few mom and pops. The mom and pops are what we specialize in and what we focus on at St. John's. We don't like to deal with companies that are so big that they're basically pharmaceutical companies and that their product quality is terrible and they use things like pharmaceutical synthetic vitamins rather than whole food vitamins. The 14 companies that own most of these supplement companies are companies like Clorox and PepsiCo and Coca-Cola and Pfizer and, you know, and, and uh, Schwab. Uh, what's the Monsanto, Bayer, you know, you're talking yeah. about drug companies. And then when you look at the 14 companies that own almost every supplement company, you actually find out that every one of those companies, except for one Japanese company, is completely, or is the primary shareholder is Vanguard or BlackRock. Wow. And that rolls, and that's another story for another day. But uh, when you have these companies and you, they, they start to cut corners, they start, just like Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson's been selling baby powder since the, you know, since the beginning of time. So, you know, all of a sudden we discover that Johnson & Johnson baby powder is killing infants. You know, it's killing yeah. babies. And then, then people go, and this is not funny, but then people w are willing to take a vaccine. Now, if a company's been selling for 120 years of baby powder, and all of a sudden you can't trust them to make baby powder, you're going to take an injection of something that they're not telling you what's in it, and you're going to just inject the, the mess out of that into you and your children. And then they find, oh, but no, it was causing Johnson & Johnson was causing blood clots. It was causing this. It was causing that. Use caution when you use the Johnson & Johnson. They weren't saying that about the Pfizer or the Moderna, uh, the mRNA ones, but the Johnson & Johnson, they were. So it's like, why would you trust yeah. Johnson & Johnson? I had a guy one time. I sat there and did, did this presentation in Michigan, and I listed 70 things that Monsanto has done that were criminal, unethical, or just horrific to society. Lying, lying to the people in Anniston, lying to the people in Calhoun County. 20,000 residents were given money, were paid out checks because of the lies that Monsanto did. And, I, and, I, and something was said, and, I, and as a joke, I said, well, so who now trusts Monsanto? And this guy in the back raises his hands. He says, I trust Monsanto. Wow. I didn't know what to say. I think I handled it okay. <laughs> you didn't did I? great. Yeah, I looked at him and said, well, me personally, I only trust the people that don't lie to me. Yeah. yeah, they don't have a proven track record of lying to me, but you know, that's un understandable if you just blindly trust liars. Uh, but you have to be careful with these companies and none of those companies produce good products. They don't. So now we have this little handful of good supplement companies that actually produce good vitamins and they get them from whole foods. And all it simply means is that rather than being made in a lab, even though they might, they're encapsulated in a lab normally, these vitamins come from foods. They're from food, they're food derived. They're not, they're not lab derived, they're not you know, synthetics. So they don't use like folic acid, they use folate, they don't use uh, like um, synthetic vitamin E, you know, they don't use DL tocopherol vitamin E, they use D alpha tocopherol vitamin E. And those little things that most people don't know to look for determine how well that vitamin is gonna work because you respond well to food, you don't respond well to drugs. And, and when people start taking synthetics, it just clogs their body up. It's just garbage. 
Wow. So it's a big difference, long story short. Well, definitely, if, and, and if you uh, have questions on that, or if you need, you can definitely hit these guys up and they will help you find out where the best place is, whether they have it or if there's someone else that does have the whole food mm -hmm. versus the synthetic that you find at other places that aren't true and real. <laughs> yeah. True or real, yeah. Exactly. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. At what age should I be screened for prostate problems? 12. I'm just kidding, no. Uh, actually, I was 14 years old and drank a 7-Up once and uh, had been drinking Mountain Dews and all these other things, but I drank a 7-Up and all of a sudden I had this horrible situation, just to be you know, very personal with everyone, uh, I couldn't urinate. I felt like I needed to urinate and I couldn't. Oh, wow. And of course, I, and, I, and I was, actually I was, I was actually 15. Anyway, so, and I, and I looked it up and it starts like prostate. So I, I, didn't, want, I didn't want my parents to know, I, didn't, I, was, I was like hiding it from everybody. And I, got a, I actually called a doctor in Boaz, Alabama and uh, and called and I told him I said I need to get a prostate screen or I need to have I'm sorry I need to have my prostate checked I think I've got something wrong with my prostate so so I realized though that it was only the seven up so I still go to this appointment and then the doctor turns around and puts a glove on and he says well we're going to do this prostate exam and I said well exactly explain to me exactly what this is and then he explained to me what a prostate exam was and I opted out. Um, but anyway, so when you're 15 and just quit drinking the 7-Up, 7-Up for some people has an allergic reaction, uh, <laughs> but otherwise, no, when you're about 45 years old, uh, that's a good time. I'm 48. Um, at the same time, are you having problems? I mean, I've never heard of someone that has had prostate you know, prostatitis or they've had any type of uh, swollen prostate or they've had prostate cancer or elevated PSA levels that didn't have problems before it. They, they had problems with, with uh, their urination, with how they feel. So guys, if you're having trouble and you feel like you need to go and you can't, uh, and then that's happening on a regular basis, or you have trouble emptying, or you're not emptying fully, then that is beyond time to be checked for your prostate and your prostate health. I, I deal too many times with too many men who have prostate cancer that could have prevented it mm -hmm. through early detection and paying attention. Men are ridiculous. I, uh, I met a man, actually I met a man, one of my relatives uh, was diagnosed with colon cancer. And I, and I literally was like, colon cancer? I thought that you were regular. And they said, no, I, I, you know, I, was, I, I was constipated all the time. I would go days and days without going to the bathroom. And I'm like, I didn't know that, but you know, who talks about that kind yeah. of thing? So it's important if you're having, you know, and I think we, I was looking at the questions we were going through here. I saw something about a, a question that was kind of like that along those lines, but it's very important that, especially us stubborn males, that when you start having a problem, you know, you need to understand, I'm not talking about being a hypochondriac, I'm talking about acting on issues and acting early. Uh, the, the same man who will have, you know, who will never let their car go more than 3,000 miles without an oil change, or if their check engine light, man, they're going to be at AutoZone to figure out what's going on or wherever, you know, get that thing scanned. Well, they'll turn around and go three to four days without having a bowel movement or, or you know, have prostate problems and not tell anybody. It's like that doesn't make any sense. If you're going to take care of your car, you need to take care of your temple that God gave you that you hopefully are going to live on this earth to be 80 something years old with uh, or more. So it's, it's very important, but men do have a, a tendency to ignore the prostate. But as soon as you start having any issues, as far as your urination, um, it's not a bad idea. And, and once you get around 45 years old, it's not a bad idea. And there are things you can take to help. Tons. Live, oh, I mean, just prevention and, you know, whatever. Uh, salt palmetto is the most popular, and salt palmetto is really popular because it has a lot of sterols within its, in, in its cons constitution. And, and when you have these sterols, one of the sterols that has had the most research is beta sitosterol. And beta sitosterol has been shown to be effective against prostate enlargement and high PSA levels. Another thing that's a little spooky is how many men have had their prostates removed as a result of a high PSA level that never had prostate cancer. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's a problem. Uh, always get second opinions when it comes to your prostate. Don't have organs and glands removed from your body until you get second opinions, please, because it, it, your life afterwards is, is highly modified. They don't talk about that as much, but it's, it's totally changed for the rest of your life.
Mm -hmm. It's almost like when we were talking about the gallbladder last week. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. I did find that other question. So um, what should I be eating to make my body be able to use the bathroom daily? Sometimes I will go three days before being able to go have a bowel movement, and I know it's not healthy. So Well, it's that good that they know that it's not that. healthy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, that was the one I was talking about. So it's, it's wild, and we, we'll, we'll ask people at St. John's, we have this little form, and people fill out the form, and they'll say, how many bowel movements do you have per day? And they'll say one, two, three, or four plus. Now, normally four plus means you have like Crohn's disease, diverticulitis, you know, diarrhea, you, you're having some sort of problems. Uh, most people should be, uh, you know, around two to three times a day. Uh, basically, every time that you eat a, a decent meal, we'll have people that'll actually scratch out per day and put per week, and then they'll circle one. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So if you're wondering why people are driving so bad these days and have so many problems, it's because they're constipated. People who are constipated are really stressed out, and so we need to be careful. And we need to get these people opened up. You know, I think we will we'll greatly contribute to the, the mental health and the, uh, the, the overall peace on earth if we can just get people having bowel movements more frequently. So, you know, that's, that should be, maybe you should write that on a tombstone. When I, <laughs> I was thinking that's the next t-shirt or something. He helped so many people have bowel, no, don't, don't, please don't do that. I'm not gonna do that. Okay, thank you. You can say something about P77. I will. Like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it's very important. And one of the ways to do that, getting to the actual question, is to increase our fiber. Fiber is extremely important. And uh, we were just reading about, what was I reading about that has, that's fiber, high fiber? We're just doing it a second ago. Uh, well, She's terrified. Uh, anyway, yeah. so um, the um, yeah, I don't um, I don't remember, but it's but we the pre a lot of your prebiotic supplements supplements that are supposed to feed your probiotics, are, they're they're actually you know fiber, and you'll use they'll use like flaxseed, they'll use inulin, they'll use a lot of different types of fiber, but the fiber gives us that satiety and it gives us that um, uh, helpful push to eliminate, to get things out of our body. Density is what helps to push things out of the body. And, uh, and then of course, cleansing. I mean, a, a lot of people need a colon cleanse. A lot of people need to do something. Now, I'm not talking about a laxative or something that you, you are on all the time that's cinnabased or has too much cascara sagrada. I'm talking about you know something good that's a fiber, a plant-based cleanser that can really get in there and clean out you know, your colon. And that can make a big difference. So. Um, a little magnesium can help too. Absolutely. Anywhere between two to 400 or even 500 milligrams of magnesium, for a lot of people, that's all they need. Mm -hmm. Is that daily or? Mm -hmm. okay. daily. Normally in the evening. Um, At night, before bed. Magnesium's wonderful. I mean, it really is. People for stress, um, what it amounts to is, it's not that magnesium is this magic pill. Magnesium is simply a mineral that most people today are deficient in. Magnesium is responsible for helping absorb bone uh, uh, calcium into your bones. Magnesium is important for helping to absorb uh, vitamin D3. Magnesium is very important to help with the regularity of your colon. Magnesium is very important to help with your heart function and your cardiac function, muscle. Uh, your, your muscle repair, your recovery, uh, restless legs, uh, leg cramps at night. Those are all signs of a lack of magnesium and simply supplementing some magnesium makes all the difference in the world. We take like what do I take, 400 milligrams a night? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I take about 400 milligrams every night, and if I don't take it, I can tell a big difference. Wow, well for everyone out there, again, we are live, so if you do have any questions, call in on the number on your screen or send them in on Facebook, and we'll try our best to get those answered for you. And Also, for trimmers, people who are concerned about like you know Parkinson's or uh, any type, and also people concerned about dementia, uh, it's a mineral that's extremely important that we're deficient in, and when people start taking magnesium, they come up with all these wild testimonials, but normally they'll have more regularity, less stress, uh, sleep better, feel better, and they'll start recovering better. And, they'll, and eventually they even look better because they, you, know, you can tell that they're just more vibrant because they feel better. Well, with that, um, right. someone else sent in the question, I recently heard that dementia is not part of aging. What causes dementia and what can I do as a 70 year old to keep it out of my life? Well, it can be part of aging because bad habits that are continued year after year are, you know, make things worse. So obviously, a 20-year-old who has bad habits uh, is going to be a little bit healthier than an 80-year-old who's had the same bad habits, you know, for those 80 years. True. So, so heredity gets a bad rap and age gets a bad rap until you're around some people that are just vibrant. And you go down to Peru and you find 80-year-old, 85-year-old women with no wrinkles and who can like lift things over their head and don't even think twice about trying to, you know, sell you stuff. And you know what yeah. I mean? They're sharp. Their minds are sharp. Their bodies are sharp and they're, they're in, cred in yeah. incredible health. And so you see people that are like that, um, and it makes a, makes a big difference, but it's kind of adorable. The lady that actually um, uh, provided us the land for the, our, our retreat center, 
uh, Mama Adela, she was 85 years old, or she is 85 years old, and she actually had to have go to a psychiatrist in Iquitos, which they don't even go to work until 7 p.m. because they normally work in the field. So your psychiatrist like works in the cow field until 7 and then they come there, like see a few patients. And so she goes, has to go to the psychiatrist just to get a mental health evaluation in order to even sell us or give us the land. Oh, wow. Yeah, because she was so old. And they wanted to make wow. sure that she wasn't selling land yeah. to Gringos for no reason. You know, it's not, we don't that have she a knew what she was doing. Yeah, Financial exactly. Reasons. But it's important though, and, and the magnesium can help out a lot. There are so many factors when it comes to aging that are causing problems, but the main problem is heavy metals on the brain. Your brain getting absolutely, and when you talk about mag magnesium, that's a mineral. That's getting over kind of similar to a heavy metal. So your body doesn't know, like with glyphosate, for example. Glyphosate, uh, your body thinks that glyphosate is L-glycine. So you eat some Cheerios, you eat a ton of glyphosate, it, your body thinks it's L-glycine, it sends it straight to the brain, wow. the glyphosate straight to the brain and and so and because and also glyphosate is, is actually known to damage the blood brain barrier mm -hmm. in and of itself so so that's when you have to get in there and you have to work on chelating and getting these heavy metals out of the body getting heavy metals out of the brain and that's not an easy thing to do uh, it's a lot, lot easier said than done up here no but there are supplements that have been shown to help fulvic acid bentonite clay um, berberine's been shown to help repair the blood brain barrier and help re reduce and it's so weird because if you try to re if you try to research berberine and glyphosate you get all these weird articles where they're testing berberine as an herbicide itself mm -hmm. like they're taking berberine wow. sprayed it on crops instead of glyphosate yeah. so it's a con it's actually they're saying berberine works better as a as a which is so strange because berberine also in the human body yeah. reverses the damage that glyph or helps reverse the damage to the blood brain barrier that glyphosate causes Wow. It's a mess. And so we, we, we have this world full of pesticides. We have this world full of PFAs. We have this world full of chemicals of all kinds. Then we have all the problems that we've always had. We have, you know, all these viruses and we have bacteria. I and mean, then we even have new viruses that they make in labs, you know, to unleash on the public. And so it's like, people are like, what, what do I do? Yeah. The crazy part is, like, there's a new form of candida. Candida, yeah. candida albus. It's like, oh, no, then there's a new form of candida. And it's, and it, what do they call it? It's drug-resistant mm -hmm. candida. Oh, my gosh. So, so I do what I normally do, Carvacrol and Candida auris. Well, there's a clinical study, two clinical, two clinical studies, in fact, about you know, how effective Carvacrol was against this particular form of Candida. Well, then I, I look up Artemisia, because I'm like, oh, I'm just nailing this. I'm gonna, this is going to be another P77 thing. And, it, and there's a clinical study showing that Artemisia is not effective at all, at all, for this particular form of Candida. So I'm like, well, shoot. Um, so then it was like P73. Then I'm like, what about hemp seed oil, the, the CBD oil? Boom, there's an article that hemp seed oil was tested. With, they, they tested against this form of candida, and it was incredible, incredibly effective for it. So there you go, P73. Literally the two natural ingredients that have been tested against this particular form of candida that are supposed to be drug resistant, are, are, it eradicates this particular form of candida from people, just the P73 that we've had for yeah. 15 years. Yes. Yeah, I've had it for 10 or 15 years. And so it's just, it's really awesome to see. My long story short is, it's like man can't screw up enough for God. And so God made all these plants and he made all these other animals and creatures too, that it's not just the plants that have the medicine. But he made these things all these years ago knowing that we would need them today. I mean, there are so many things for, um, you know, he made reishi mushroom, you know, mm -hmm. for people with uh, STDs. Yep. Um, you know, I mean, you're talking about something that can literally um, herpes. Yeah. Okay. There's so many people who come to us. Like Calhoun County, you got some bad mojo going around here, so there's a lot of that going around. And they'll come to us because they trust us. And of course, they walk up and they're like, I need to talk to somebody about something. And they'll talk and they'll, they'll talk to us a little bit about it. And we're like, hey, we understand things happen. And so they'll start taking reishi mushroom. And we've had people go and get blood work done after. Now, I'm not saying that it cures it, I'll never say anything cures anything other than God. But it's really awesome because you have people who were diagnosed as having herpes who started taking reishi mushroom, maybe six capsules a day, who turn around and get retested a year later and they show that they don't have it. Of course, wow. what I tell them is you do have it, you're just suppressing that to the nth degree. Right. So, you know, just keep taking your reishi. And, they'll, and if they quit taking the reishi, they'll have, normally have a flare up, they'll have a problem again. But it's amazing to see something, I mean, a mushroom, yeah. a fungus. I mean, who would have thought, you know, let's, let's, let's dry this particular mushroom and then let's eat it. 
you know, right. and then it'll get rid of this horrible virus that you know is incurable and that has plagued humanity since the we since the beginning of time that we know of. So it's 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 pretty awesome to see how potent this stuff is and how well it works. It's well, awesome. as far as dementia goes too. Um, a lot of dementia symptoms come from medications that people are on. Absolutely. Um, they're over medicated and it's giving them, it's giving them dementia symptoms. That has, happens a whole lot. Once you start weaning some of that off, a lot of those dementia symptoms will go away. There'll be someone with a kidney infection that'll end up with a diagnosis as having dementia before they leave the hospital. Yeah. Almost everyone who has a kidney infection has seems like someone who has dementia. Yeah. So you're not right in the head normally when you have a kidney infection. So a lot of people get that diagnosis of dementia. They're like, I, I mean, I'm gonna die of Alzheimer's, so it's just a matter of time. No, that's not the case. This can be reversed. We've seen it time dementia and time again. Dementia is reversible. Uh, absolutely, We've, and, it, and it is not hereditary. No. And one question I had with though, um, when they do come in and see you, I know it's gonna be different for each person, but roughly how long once they get on a supplement or something, till they start seeing an effect. It depends. Uh, I mean, we have a we have a formula that's a, a sort of an aphrodisiac for men that'll work in normally 10 minutes and it'll work for 3 days with one pill. You know, that's okay. that's an exception. Uh, right. then we have other like I, I had somebody taking Paul Diarco yesterday and they started on the Paul Diarco and they said, "How long am I probably going to have to take this?" I said, "Probably about a year." They're like, "To see effects." And I'm like, "Well, I mean, for you to take this plant that grows in Peru, this inner bark of this tree, make a Make a, we made actually a tincture out of it, and you take this plant and put it in your mouth, and then it's gonna cure your toenail fungus, right? That pathway is gonna take a minute. Yeah. You know, so you, and fungus is a problem from the inside out. And so when we, when we put people on things, it's just, we try to educate them and try to let them know and give them an idea. Uh, cardio 24 seven, people, some people can take that and within five minutes, their blood pressure will be reduced a lot of okay. times. CBD oil, uh, CBD, CBD oil. gummies. Yeah, Those the, are really fast acting um, for people that have issues and need that stuff. Mm -hmm. And they work within minutes. Uh, yet other things, um, chlorophyll, for example, P people start taking chlorophyll for their bad breath or to purify their their internal. Well, I mean, it'll work. It'll seem like it's working great in three days, but just wait until three weeks. You know, it's it'll be better. working even better. Yeah. You know, and before you know it. By the way, it'll make your uh, it'll make your bowel movements green. <laughs> Just so you know, since we're on that topic today for some reason tonight. Apparently, yes. Yeah, this is like <laughs> the night for that. Well, uh, we only have about two minutes left here, but because you mentioned something, someone said, if we've got time to cover this, I constantly have a problem with bad breath. I regularly b brush my teeth and try to use breath mints. Is there anything I can take to help with this? Chlorophyll. There you go. Chlorophyll's great uh, for such things. No, we actually, and, and we have a formula. It's, it's kind of funny. This, our, our stop smoking formula at St. John's was originally designed as a keep smoking formula. In other words, we made it for people who smoked and smoke pipes or cigars or, or cannabis legally, you know, right. and, and for medicine. And, uh, and so these, we made a formula designed for people who had no intention of stopping smoking, uh, but it would still help with their, their pulmonary, their lungs, and help with their heart, and help with their, uh, their cardiovascular, their, help with their, uh, the, their um, immune system, and also to help with their breath. And, the, and we put chlorophyll in it. As, a, as an extra. Of course, then it ended up turning into a, I also put some lobelia in it, so then it turned into a stop smoking formula too, so. Um. Some peppermint gel caps are pretty good for breath too. You just swallow a peppermint mm -hmm. gel cap. It's got oil, peppermint oil inside of a little gel cap. You swallow it and then you'll taste peppermint basically the rest of the day. Another thing you can do is to take your water and to put one drop of peppermint oil in it. Uh, or even to take just a little bit of peppermint oil. You gotta be careful with this because we don't it normally recommend the oral application of essential oils. But you can just take a tiny little bit and just barely touch it to your tongue. And, uh, and a lot of times for, for a quickie, you know, but once again, that's not getting to the root of the problem. The problem is you either have liver issues, you have stomach issues, you have gastrointestinal issues, uh, and you, you need to be cleansed. Or dental. Or dental, well, the dental is a whole separate deal. Uh, so that's, that's a common too, but, uh, but yeah, chlorophyll. Well, we are sorry. We are out of time for today, <laughs> of course. But we want to thank everyone for joining us here. Tune in next week again. And uh, we'll, you know, any questions you may have in the meantime, go ahead and send them in and we'll get those to Dr. Matt and Deborah and um, see if we can get some answers. So thank you so much and you guys have a great week.